Hello friends, welcome to the injection molding segment part 1 under the edges of polymer process engineering. Here we will have a brief outlook about what is the injection molding, what is the process of injection molding because injection molding is an integral part of polymer processing. You can, you can find different products made of injection molding. So let us have a brief outlook about that what we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. We will have a discussion about the historical background of injection molding, um, what are the basic principle of injection molding um, with an overview and different type of injection molding machines was based on the requirement, based on the products, based on other parameters. There are different type of injection molding machines. So, we will, we are going to discuss different types of injection molding machines in this particular segment. Then uh, there are various advantages and disadvantages associated with the injection molding process. So, we are going to discuss under the head of advantage and disadvantage of injection molding machines. Then because uh, it is a cyclic process, so we are going to discuss uh, about the breaking down of the injection molding cycle. Then different type of a tooling aspect we are going to discuss and we will have a discussion about uh, the various term related to the injection molding like L by D ratio, compression ratio, back pressure, injection speed, injection speed and cushions, all these things we are going to discuss. So let us have a start with the, the historical background of injection molding machine. So injection molding, first it was designed and patented in USA in 1872 by Hayat Brothers. Now this heating cylinder design, this was first recognized in a patent issued to Adam Gaston in 1932 because the heating cycle is an integral part because if you are having the polymers um, then you need to, to melt down or heat down so that it can acquire a proper shape and that is why this heating cycle cylinder need to be there. Uh, large scale development of injection molding uh, machinery design towards the machine we know that uh, did not occur until late 50s in Germany because Germany is, Germans are there mastered in the um, machinery aspect. So it gave rise to the global sector that alone employs about 0.5 million people in United States. So uh, the number of uh, uh, functioning plastic sector facilities is increasing day by day because of the advent of a new product, because of the de de development of a new polymers. So the number of functioning units growing day by day. The biggest injection molding industry in all the European countries is found in Germany. Although India is not far off in India, we are having a large number of injection molding machines across country. The globalization of the market, this has been significant element for the entire injection moldings in the sector. So the many plastic uh, injection moldings, they are manufactured at uh, low cost facilities uh, in India, China, Eastern Europe, etc. And especially in India, the Gujarat state as well as uh, some part of the southern state, they are largely manufacturing all those injection molding machines under the Make in India mission. Let us have a um, introduction about uh, the injection molding process. Now injection molding uh, is uh, most common method for producing the different plastic parts, commodity uh, materials, uh, all kind of uh, say plastic chairs, bucket, all those things. So all kind of commodity uh, things can be prepared by the injection molding. Now it is a cyclic process that begins with a rapid mold fitting and end with the cooling and ejection. So there are you can say the four integral part we will discuss later on. One is the, the polymer, how you are introducing the polymer and then it is uh, passed through the, after heating it passes through the mold. So the mold design is again very crucial. The shape you want over the period of time that is essential because uh, you are dealing with the, the heating aspect, then a cooling channels are essential and then once the parts or commodity part uh, material has been prepared, then you need to eject it out from the injection molding machine. So that is why it is a cyclic process. Now as raw material a variety of substances available both plastics and non-plastics can be used and uh, the machine they always be designed for the material that is being used. So you may have a different type of a machines with a different type of a polymeric material, different type of a molds are there based on the requirement. 
the materials uh, usually which is usually accessible like grains, powder, plasticide in an injection unit before being injected under a very high pressure into a clamped mold and usually pressure maintained at 500 to, to 1500 bars. Now in injection molding the plasticizing area because essentially uh, you need to melt or you need to heat the, the, the material so that it can acquire the desired shape. Um, so the plasticizing area and the molds they are kept apart. The temperature of the plasticizing cylinder or the plasticizing area is maintained at the same level as the processing temperature. Now simultaneously the mold is kept warm enough for the cross linking or cold enough for demolding of the injection molding objects usually for the thermoset. Now the plasticide substance is introduced into the clamp mold. We will discuss the, when we will have a figure of these injection molding machine. Now the injection molding machine they are having an integrated clamping unit usually that house the mold and the injection unit. So usually the injection unit, the, the cylinder and piston assembly, they pump the, the polymeric material to the molds through the different channels and mold is usually a dye which can produce the, the parts which is the desired one for the process. Now thermoplastics, they are commonly processed under the injection molding equipment like solid white neck, flat products like bucket, cabinets, automobile industrial parts. They are being pr produced by injection molding uh, machine and the injection molten thermoplastic material into the closed mold which is relatively cool. Now before we go into the detail, let us discussion about the different type of injection molding machine. Usually uh, we are using three different type of injection molding machines. One is the hand injection molding. Second one is the plunger type of injection molding and third one is the reciprocating screw type of injection molding. Now here you see this is the hand injection molding machine. Now this is the vertical machine uh, consists of the barrel, plunger, band heater along with the energy regulator, rack and pinion system for injecting the material by the plunger and torpedo and a nozzle. Here you see that these are all assemblies are there and the control units are there and by this you are applying the pressure to the system so that the molten polymer can, in, can be inserted into the mold. Now this is a plunger type of uh, uh, injection molding machine. This is uh, the vertical and this one is the horizontal plunger type of injection molding machine. Here you see that the, the hopper where the, the polymeric material can be subjected and then here you can house the, the mold where the, the desired product dye is there and through th these heating units the, the, the molten polymer or heated polymer can be injected inside the, the mold. Now this is the basic anatomy of uh, the plunger type injection molding machine. These are the different parts. Now if you compare this, th this one, this is the material hopper where you can inject, uh, where you can place the, the pallets or a powder, the polymer form, then the dyes for the coloring materials. Sometimes you need to add the additives which can also be inserted over here. And then there is a, a heating chamber. You see here, this is the heating chamber where the different type of heating bands are there so that whatever polymers, whatever the pellets or the powders you are injecting, it can be heated. Now this is the horizontal or sorry, hydraulic injection cylinder where you are pushing the pressure so that this material can be passed through. Now this heated material can be injected through this nozzle tip. Now there are heating torpedo, there are certain the plunger type of a system like here. So by this way, this material from here, it can go inside the mold where it can acquire the proper shape which is desired one. Uh, this is the reciprocating screw type of uh, uh, the injection molding machine. Now here the th three major components are there. One is the feeding zone, the compression zone and the metering zone. 
Now, here you see that this is the hopper where you are subjecting the either the plastic granules or powder. Then this through this hopper and then this, this is the heating assembly where you are melting or you are heating the, the, the plastic granules or polymeric gran uh, powders so that it can acquire a melting behavior and through this, this is the mold where you need to put the things in the desired shape and through this nozzle, this material is injected to this mold cavity or where this the plastic material can insert it into the mold and these are the movable platens both of them this is male and female and uh, through which a uh, molten polymer can acquire the desired shape. Now this is the barrel and here this is the, uh, the injection segment and this one is the clamping segment. So you can say the clamping segment is attributed to the the mode section and the uh, injection section, it comprises the feeding hopper, it comprises the pushing uh, system, it comprises the, the heating system, all those things are under the injection segment. So, this, these are the two parts of this one. Now, if you see that the integral part, another integral part of the reciprocating screw molding machine, this is the nozzle, here you can have a more clear picture and through this the, the polymeric material inserted into the, the mold. These are the mold plates. So, usually it is the male and female type of a system and through the runners, the, the molten material can pass through these, uh, the, the, these molds. Now, here you see the heaters and this one is the fixed pattern. On, here you see the hopper. So, by rotating motion, this uh, rotating or reciprocal motion, the material is passed through this heating zone to this nozzle zone and to this the, the, the mold zone. So, all these things they are the integral part of this reciprocating screw uh, injection molding machine. Now, uh, because these machines are some, some, sometimes they are referred as a very simple type of a machine. Then uh, and uh, sometimes they are very complex in nature. So, uh, this injection process, injection, heating and mold, these three are the integral processes. So, let us discuss about the injection process. Now, here this plasticizes the material by the reciprocating screw. Here you see that this is the plasticizing section. Now, this injects the molten material to a closed mold. Here you see that this is the closed mold. Uh, there are various channels through which it can go inside the mold with the gates and the runners. Then it cools the mold because it is a heat and plasticized material. So, obviously you need to, uh, to uh, cool the mold otherwise once you remove the, the part then definitely it may deform over the shape. Then refill the material for the next cycle. So, once it overs the, the prepared part come out and then it machine is ready for another cycle. Ejection of the product is again very important at appropriate time because overheating or cooling this may create a problem and the, the part may get deformed and then uh, the closing the mold for the further cycle is again very essential part. So, all these are a cyclic process. Now, these are some of the commodity items which can be injection molded like buckets and different type of uh, packaging materials. All these things are injection molded. Now, there are various advantages associated with the injection molding process. One is the high production rate because it is a cyclic process. So, uh, once the material is in, then uh, definitely once the part uh, prepared then automatically the machine ready for the next cycle. Uh, you can have a large volume production because of the cyclic process and a relatively low labor cost per unit. Automatic machines are available nowadays so that uh, the labor cost or uh, manhandling cost is very low over the period of time and higher susceptible for uh, automation section because this, these machines nowadays completely automated machines are available. Uh, there is not uh, any requirement for finishing 
and uh, different surfaces, colors, finishings, these are available and you can prepare the good decorative items from this, uh, these injection mold molding machines. Uh, we have discussed some of the things over here and the process because the low labor cost, because of the large volume production and because of the high production rate, uh, these machines and this process are most economical. Uh, usually, there are uh, um, some, some uh, you can say the, the, the uh, some advantages or disadvantages associated small parts, they are impossible to fabricate in the quantity or in the com uh, in comparison to other method methods. These are another advantages because some small parts as you can see here, these parts can be fabricated from the injection molding machine very easily which are very difficult for other methods to produce. Uh, the wastage uh, or the scrap loss uh, usually results from the runner gates jets can be reground and reused. So, so usually there are certain wastage material may be the because of the runners and some sort of the material may come out this can be recycled back in that particular machine only and different materials can be used to produce the same type without changing the mold or machine. So, these are the case sensitive things. Now, it is possible to preserve the tight dimension tolerance. This is a very important thing in the injection molding process. The metallic and non-metallic inserts, this can be molded into different uh, uh, into the parts as we can, uh, we can uh, see in the figures. The glass, asbestos, tar, carbon, they are just of the few example of the filler that can be molded with the plastic to create the part. Only thing is that you need to put all these things into the hopper. The materials inherent qualities, this provide the numerous benefits like excellent strength to weight ratio, corrosion resistance, strength and clarity. All these things are the plus point of this injection molding process. But Simultaneously, there are so many limitations of these injection molding machines or rather you can say the disadvantage of these injection molding machine. Um, sometimes the low profit margin which is frequently the outcome of uh, intense industry competitiveness and uh, you see that the mold prices are high and even in Indian context sometime with specialized mold we need to import from Korea or China. So, these, uh, this, this add on their pricing and ultimately it is add on to the per unit volume of the part being produced to the injection molding. Now, the cost of molding machine and supporting equipments are relatively high as on date. Now, problem arise from a lack of understanding of the basic of the process. Now, this is very crucial because you need to keep an eye about the, the properties of the polymer being used as a raw material, you need to keep an eye over the affinity of the dyes and other additives being inserted in the upper section. So, you need to see of different type of problem that may arise because of the process. Then long term failures that could come from a lack of understanding of the materials and a long term characteristics. So, that is why we discussed that this particular characterization of the material is extremely really important and this characterization need to be tuned as per the, the basics of the injection molding machine. Now, uh, the uh, reciprocating screw type uh, of a screw machine uh, process cycle, this uh, process cycle is uh, split into the sixth stage. Now, one is to first stage one, which uh, briefly we discussed in the, the, the couple of slides ago, that the material injected into the tool. So, this is the hopper and this material being injected into the tool. Now, this uh, twin screw, this uh, screw serves the both purpose. One is that it move forward the material. Then second aspect is they properly mixed the things of so dye and other additives being added. So, the second stage, the, this screw big begins to turn and retract the metering a specified weight of molten material for the next shot. And the previous shot which, which is being inserted is now cooling and in the closed tool. So, this can be come out. The third stage, the injection molding uh, unit moves back from the clamping unit. So, this movement is like this. So, the machine is preparing itself for the next shot. Uh, 
The fourth stage, this tool uh, opens and reveal the cooled injection molding component and uh, this component can be come out. So, this is uh, some, some sort, this is a male and a female type of a part or vice versa. Now, this is uh, through this runner, the material is being injected. Now, this is uh, the component which we need to commit out. This is the cooled one because see if uh, the cooling process is uh, performed at the atmospheric temperature, then there may be a chance the, the part may get deformed. Then this is you see that the, the, the injection part is uh, uh, the, the ejection part is there. So, the prepared part is come out from the machine and uh, the last stage is that the injection unit then move forward for the next round of uh, um, cycle or a start a fresh cycle. So, in a nutshell you see that uh, this is the hopper from here you are the plastic material either granule in a or in a powder form plus dye plus other additives if required and these all these things inserted and the mixing process plus heating process performed over here. And then the molten mixed material is inserted into this uh, through this uh, runner to this uh, mold where the this mold is filled with the molten plastic material and once this it acquires the shape then the cooling cooling starts and this section will come out and the prepared part may come out from this mold assembly. So, by this way uh, the cooled product come out and then machine is again ready for next sort of the cycle. Now, uh, let us discuss about the breaking down aspect of uh, injection molding cycle. The injection molding cycle this can be broken down into three distinct uh, stages. One is plastication, uh, second one is the mold filling and third one is, is the cooling with solidification. So, proper optimization in all the aspect is quite essential in injection molding machine. At what time you need to come out with the material, at what time, what temperature is required, what pressure need to apply, how the cooling process takes place, what should be the cycle time. So, all these things are quite essential and you must have some optimization in this aspect. So, let us discuss about the plastication. This is carried out in the injection unit and the polymer flow rate which is quite essential to be monitored. The polymer flow rate is governed by the material processing condition of the plastication state. A combination of material you need to have a proper knowledge of rheology, the barrel temperature, shear, back pressure, screw speed, mixing speed, heating zones, all these things you need to be very careful and you need to optimize these things. Now, the aim is to produce the homogeneous melt because uh, otherwise there may be some segmental things and the quality of the product will not be there. So, the basic objective is that you must have the homogeneous melt for the next stage and uh, uh, this has to be done when the material enters to the mold. The parameters which are usually controlling the plastication we have already discussed that the cylinder temperature, screw back temperature, back pressure, etc. And then what is the size and other things so that proper homogenization should be there. Uh, next is the filling. This section the injection unit delivers the preset amount of a molten polymer to the mold tool. So, excess material is always uh, undesirable because it may not only lead to the pressure to the, um, uh, to the injection molding system, but also it may create the future problem and we need to uh, recycle the excess material which unnecessarily enhance the cost of your product. So, the mold filling parameters they are crucial uh, to the outcome. Uh, particularly whenever taking into account things like warp edge, this is sometimes referred as an orientation effect, surface finish, skin formation, all those things. So, the level of the residual stress are also assumed to be primarily influenced by filling dynamics. Now, the reproducible injection speed, these are again crucial since even little alteration can result in the valencies in the 
the final product. This may create some air voids. This may create the weakness of the. Uh, this may further weaken the 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 final part. So this is again a very crucial. Too high injection speed can result the jetting and deterioration, which can alter the mechanical properties. Apart from this, if you are having the too high injection speed, sometimes the the mold runners can get choked, and this may ultimately destroy your mold, and which is very costly affair. Now, due to the thicker frozen layer, the brief shots, the incomplete filling of the mold, uh, low speed may increase the pressure needs. So, again, this is uh, a very important, and this is the engineering perspective. Then, let us have a discussion about the packing and solidification. So, once a material is in the tool, uh, filling tool, packing, cooling, and eventually the ejection of uh, the component are required, the packing stage goal is to add more material to make up shrinkage brought on by the solidifying polymer decrease the density. So, this is again very crucial and you need to optimize because once the material is cooled, there may be certain effects may take place, this may ultimately deform the, the outcome or the product. The component would shrink, deform as a result of uneven cooling if additional polymer were not supplied. So, this type of a thing need to be addressed because ultimately the additional polymer put a pressure so that the final part or product acquires the desired shape upon cooling because shrinkage may occur. So, the polymeric chain may get um, uh, um, entangled. So, the, the deformation may take place. So, that is why to overcome such kind of a thing you need to have some additional polymer to be injected. Now, in a perfect scenario, the packing and cooling processes uh, would keep the final dimension as near as possible feasible to the design tolerance. Now, variables during the stage are uh, packing pressures, packing time and the mold temperature. So, mold temperature and the injection temperature, these need to be uh, the sink in, in, dif in different ways. So, the once the material is cooled sufficiently, the component can be injected and injection cycle continues. Now, here you see the, the breakdown of injection molding process, um, cooling different aspects like mold closes, uh, cycle starts, injection, packing stage, screw backs, uh, cooling and then mold open. So, this represents the complete cycle of injection molding um, process. Now, you see that uh, the heart of the injection molding process is mold because this gives the proper shape of the product you desire. Apart from this, this also having a, a triggering factor for the proper shape, proper quality and all those things which is needed. So, that is why the mold you, is said to be the heart of the process. Now, here different type of uh, molds are there. The injection mold tool has two major purpose. One is that it is the cavity into which the molten plastic is injected and the surface of the tool acts as the heat exchanger because you need to cool down or you need to heat all those things carried out in the mold op operation. The injection mold designs may differ depending on the type of the material and component being molded. Uh, one is the two plate mold. It is the simplest one the male and female type and this the mold cavities are formed in one plate with the, the stationary half of the mold blank. Now, the central screw brushing can be placed into the stationary half of the mold or it is possible to have a direct runner system into a multi impression mold and the moving half of the mold contains the ejection mechanism so that the pins can insert it and the material can out come out. Now, here you see the two plate injection mold. Now, here this is the ejector pin and you see that they, these are the ejector system and these are the cavities which we were discussing over the period of time and this is the sprue and this one is the stationary plate. So, this one is the moving plate and this one is the stationary plate. So, this moves as per the, the injection or the plunger type of a system moves in and out so that uh, once uh, and one one segment is fixed. So, this this moves like this. 
Uh, another is the stripper type of a mold. This it is similar to the standard two plate mold except the ejection system. It has a stripper plate for ejection, whereas the standard one has the pins and a sleeve as ejector. The advantage of a stripper plate is that increased surface area for ejection. Now here you see that the stripper plate. Now here this is the moving plate as discussed, and this one is the stripper plate, and this is the cavity you see and this one is the parting line and this is the sprue and this one is the stationary plate. Now stationary plate is fixed with the, the stationary part of injection molding machine and this one is the moving which moves as the barrel moves in and out. Now slide molds it also has a two plate mold it has a slides and cam pins for additional lateral movement and it is suitable for producing part with the undercuts or external threads like this. This is the slide mold. Now here you see this is the ejector system. This is the cam pin so that it can ease out the, the finished product and as usual these are the cavities, these are the slides and this one is the sprue. So again this is the stationary plate and this is the, the, the moving plate. Another is the three plate mold. This is used when multi cavities are involved uh, and a semi or fully automatic working is required. It has an extra plate and extra plate usually continues the gate on one of its sides with the complete runner system preferably trapezoidal. Uh, now this is a more obviously when there are more parts then it, will, it is a more expensive and a slower in production than the two plates. Now here you see the three mold system. Now here this is again as usual our ejection system. This one is the stripper bolt and this cavity and this one is the runner and the sprue is here. So this is the stationary plate and this one is as usual our uh, moving plate connected with the barrels. Now there are various screws being used in the injection molding machine. Now. Uh, there are screws with uh, three distinct reason feed zone, melting transition reason and the metering section. Now here you see that the injection screws this is the passive screw and this is the standard screw. I told you that uh, uh, the purpose of screw is, is to move the material as well as the mixing of the material and sort of this because of the friction the material is again some sort is heating. Now a screw usually they are having three uh, zones with the ring plunger assembly. One is the feed zone where the plastic is carried along a fixed root diameter after initially entered into the screw. The screw. Then the transition zone where the plastic is moved in the forward direction and is squeezed and the melted along the tapering root with an increasing root diameter so that when it is melting then it can easily pass to the nozzle. Then the metering zone where the plastic is finished melting and is being transported forward to the uh, a constant root diameter to a temperature and viscosity where parts can be formed through nozzle. L by D ratio is again very important. L by D ratio is the ratio of uh, the flight at length effective length of the screw to outside its outside diameter. For thermoplastic it is usually minimum 20 is to 1 and for thermoset elastomer um, it is approximately 14, point, uh, 14 is to 1. For extended plasticizing screw the L by D may be 24 is to 1. This is usually used for the thermoplastic with the color additives especially with the polypropylene and polyethylene. So effect of if we are having the high L by D ratio then uh, the plastic can create more shear heat uniformly without degrading the high uh, homogeneity of the metal is produced by increasing the mixing opportunities. The longer the plastics residence period in the barrel might allow for greater short cycle to happen more quickly. Compression ratio is again very important. This is the ratio of the first flight depth of feed zone to the last flight depth of metering zone or first channel volume of the feed zone to the last channel volume of the metering zone. Now typically it ranges from 1.5 is to 1 to 4.5 is to 1 for the most thermoplastic materials. Now most injection screws classified as a general purpose and have a compression ratio of 2.5 is to 1 to 3. 
is to 1 and thermostatic screw have a ratio 1 is to 1 ratio. Now, uh, question arises that um, what will happen if we are having the high compression ratio. So, effect of high compression ratio is again very important. Now, it will provide the greater shear heat imp imparted to the resin, greater heat uniformity to the melt, high potential for creating stresses in some resin and high energy consumption back pressure it is again very important. Now, it is the amount of the pressure exerted by the material head of the screw as the screw is pushed back in preparation for the next shot and it has the unit of kilogram per centimeter square or bar. Um, the effect of back pressure is the more homogeneous mixture, you may have the proper melting, you may have a more compact material and sometimes it leads to degradation. Now, this is uh, this is uh, showing the pressure profile in injection molding machine. So, you see that if uh, th this is the one cycle, one mold closes, then uh, material, then plunger machine, it fills, then it, it goes forward direction, the pressure or plunger adds the material to the com compensate for the shrinkage as a material, then injection and then a clamp hold and mold close and part removed. So, you see the, the pressure versus time cycle. So, this type of a, uh, this type of a plot is essential when you are performing any kind of injection molding operation. Injection speed is again very crucial, important. This is uh, the forward speed of the screw during its injection operation and it is having the unit of centimeter per second. Um, now, this uh, the effect of injection speed is attributed to the easy injection of material. This avoid the short shots and sometimes lead to the more orientation and burn marks. Uh, now, the screw rotation speed is again important. It is uh, you see that represented in RPM and uh, rate at which this plasticizing screw rotates. Now, the faster uh, screw rotation can cause the faster material is compressed by screw flights. It may increase the amount of shear heating it may create the low residence time and some less melting. Cushioning. The cushioning is the difference between the screw's actual forward position and the maximum permitted forward position. So, the more cushion results more residence time, sometimes uh, degrades, degrades the material. Now, the cushion would be 0 if the screw were permitted to complete its whole stroke before coming to the mechanical stop against the nozzle. Now, zero cushion has no hold over box and usually 3 to 6 mm cushion is employed in that particular aspect. Now, here you see that the cushioning aspect, 4 to 6 mm for the smaller machines and 10 to 15 mm for the larger machines. So, at the outset in this particular uh, segment, we discussed about the various integral part of injection molding machines and what are the different zones, how uh, we can optimize and what are the integral part of these, in, uh, these injection molding machines. Now, ultimately the basic aim is to have a brief outlook about these injection molding machines so that once performed, it can provide a good product as desired. For your convenience, we have uh, enlisted a couple of references. You can utilize these references as and when needed. Thank you very much.